Hello and welcome to Cohabitation. This is an RPG game. Um, I can't remember what game it was. Uh, but the creators of this also created a, a different game. Uh, and I'll put, I'll boop it in the editing. It'll be booped, okay? And we're gonna play this one. It has really good art from the pictures I've seen. And I like the song. I wasn't expecting to be hit with this bop when I opened the game up. But I was blessed. My little ears were like, oh, they perked up. Oh. I'm already started. I don't know. Alright. Oh. You just... You just click. You can't... Oh, you can move. I like the clicking. Hello again. Let's see. You are XMO124 of the Alkyans race. A long time resident of... You guessed it. The planet Alkia. Furthermore, this big old colorful rock you call home rotates at a measly speed of 100 Alkian lengths per quarter Alkia day. That means your nights are few and far between and last just as long as your wearisome days. How boring. It does, however, mean that your dreams are bloody crazy. I mean, you would know it better than anyone. Is that his smiling face? Is that his little mouth? It gives me little, little smiley. You're in one right now. Who are... <laughs> what am I? I'm like a fish... And the robot, and the mouse. So I'm in a dream. So you got put in a dream, huh? Yeah, buddy. Did the swirling black mass behind me not give it away? But anyway, it is strange for you to be the one asking questions. All I am is a reflection of your inner thoughts. Yes, it makes sense, though. Given the rarity of nights, your species doesn't dream very often. And the dreams that do happen are all spaced out. In turn, your kin have failed to develop a dream sense when they sleep. And always regress into this same pitiful amnesiac state. Kinda cute, when you think about it. But annoying for me. Because I gotta explain this stuff every time. I digress. There's more important things to discuss. Listen. Things are about to get shaken up, buddy. Big time. And I hate to say it, but the responsibility for it is gonna fall squarely on you. I'll tell you about it in the next room. What a nice man. What what a nice gent this man. I've opened a pathway to the next room behind my cute old head. Follow me there. Got some things to say to you. I feel like I gave him a wrong voice. I might have to change it. He seems more friendly and less cursed, although he's kind of both. My big old head. Follow me. I got something to say to you. Well, all right then. I kind of like the clicking. All right. He's got like fingy toes on his head. Not really anything. Just trying to see if there's anything cool here. All right, I'll talk to the man. Hello again. Now, what is your name? I know, your XMO-124 of the Alkyans race, but I mean, what is your name? You know. 
What? Like, my name? What? It's not rocket science. Just tell me. What is your name? Make sure to select the input using the cursor. You can backspace with the escape key or by double tapping if you are if you are on mobile. <laughs> um I wanna be named Spiggle. I see. Spig No! No! I put Spiggle! No. Now I don't remember what I put. I thought I put Spiggle. S H P I G G L E. But this says Squiggle. Hmm. Curious. Maybe I just am dumb. Now, Spiggle, I must ask. Ah! Which of these beings best represents you? Uh... Uh, this one, I guess? I like, I like this one though. And I like this one. I'm gonna choose this one. Oh god, I changed my mind. No. Let me try this one. Alright, well, I don't know if I'm gonna like these, but that'll be this one. Yep. So be it. Ah! Why you be yell at me? Don't yell at me! Ow. Follow me into the next room. Yeah. Follow me into the next room, little one. Okay. Now, this is the final room. I promise. I'm going to need you to tell me one last thing. Your species has no concept of relationship, of a relationship as far as I know. This would make sense given reproduction is pretty much handled by a single queen. But still, I need you to answer this question with utmost attention and honesty. If you had a partner, what would their name be? Uh... Meek. I see. Ow. Oh, I have to choose Smeek. Which one of these beings would be most likely to represent your partner? I thought I already chose my partner. I thought that's who that other thing was for. Ideal partner? I wanna choose someone who's like, looks... I like this one. I like her little hat. She can have a little hat. So be it. Listen, Eximo-124 or Squiggle. Schmiggle. Spiggle. Whatever you prefer. We're approaching the end of the road for this dream anyway. And though you may wish it w You may soon wish you had never woken up. You must soldier on. The fate of life as we know it dangles ever so precariously in your appendages. So, um... No pressure. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Friend Man. Oh gosh, I'm a crazy fish monster. What a strange dream. Me, Spiggle, know strangeness when they see it.
A terminal whose sole use is to monitor and maintain your sleeping pod. Nothing seems to be awry. My sleeping pod. With Alkia Day's beginning, it has ran Awaken Protocol. Bright lights now shine on its inside. Unfortunately, that means you can't sleep in it for now. I already read that. What's this? Despite what you may think, this is a computer. It is operated by putting one's eyes up to the goggles and uses ocular movement as a means of control. You put your eyes inside. What commands do you wish to execute? Save game. <laughs> e communications? You have two e communications. Reading first e communication. Two me from Hall detect subject auto e communication hole breach. Photon analysis has detected a possible hole breach presence within radio warehouse 17. Current data has this location as your post. Please report to your supervisor for more information. Reading second e-communication to me from whoever. Subject importance beyond critical. Report to me immediately after awakening protocol. All has been lost. And the e-communications has been reached. Okay. Unlock the door. Door's been unlocked. Okay, I still want to look at stuff. A terminal whose sole use is to monitor and maintain your sleeping pod. Above it sits a simple placard. Me, it reads. Xmo124. <gasps> Whoa. Hey, everybody. A fellow Akian's bedroom door. It appears to have they have left. You're not allowed inside. I go over here. I'll wait these other bedrooms. You have no business there. Well, all right then. Why did you even put it there? World building? For all I know, there could have... Oh my goodness. Look at my little movie. My footies are moving and a grooving. Hello, friend. It's me, Xmo. Also known as Spiegel. Technology here belongs to Xmoly. 009. You're not allowed to touch it. Technology here belongs to Skmilla. Technology here belongs to Skmilla. What about these books? Do they also belong? It looks like there's some physical records here of Alkia's history. Which would you like to read? Alkia is a desert planet in Barred Spiral Galaxy 1. Recorded history begins roughly a, begins roughly 100,000 Alkia rotations ago, where a certain species evolved the ability to communicate. This species would soon learn how to conduct agricultural form civilizations and conquer their own landmass, and would come to be known as Alkians. Alkians subsist solely off planet species that thrive in the Alkian desert lands, and have engineered such crops to support their large populations. Furthermore, their race consists almost entirely of males with a single queen that gives birth to all Alkians. Mating with the queen is done according to collective need. If a certain generation needs more miners, more 001 class Alkians will be permitted to mate. If our race calls for more scientists, higher classes will form the brunt of the breeding efforts. This is because it is believed that one class is one's class is inherited given how mo most Alkians are proud to fill their respective roles. This seems to be inarguably true. The queen who admittedly lacks an ability to communicate, has no problem with this status quo and passes on her role to a new queen every 1,000 Alkian rotations or so. Furthermore, as a society, us Alkians pride authority, caste, and duty to one species. Very few of us have thoughts of deviancy, crimi criminality, and truancy. Those that do, however, are quickly sun sundowned. Sundowned? What does that do? They just got send me out into the desert and let me burn to death? That's horrible. Though, as will be elaborated on in a later section, Alkians are unsure if they are alone in this galaxy. As a collective, we doubt that there would exist any other civilizations with the same discipline and vigor as us. No, no, no. Is that why we all look so mutated? Because we only have one queen and we're all incest babies? I feel like it's related. 
technology advances. Augians were quick to adopt advanced technologies across the board. These came into two major forms. The first was computers. For thousands of Alkia rotations, Alkians would solve massive problems in engineering through the use of countless conscripted 001 class citizens. Each citizen would line up in a row and work on a series of math problems which were passed on to other, others in the group. Proficient solvers were promoted. Those that made the mistakes were sundowned. Not sundowned! For a while. So we live in like an incest Sparta world. Where if anyone goes out of line, you just kill them. And then you, you know, have sex with your mom. That seems to be the status quo around these parts. For a while, this was sufficient, and Alkian society flourished. Much of our planet's greatest architecture and weapons systems were made using this method. However, it was eventually realized that this process of mass com computation could be replicated by a series of connected transistors that could either be turned off or on. Upon this discovery, Alkia's computing revolution began. 001 class citizens, who were usually relegated to mass computation roles, were restructured into foot soldiers, miners, and hospital grunts to support Alkia's new path. The discovery of electronic computers, furthermore, laid the groundwork for our race's second prime advancement, quantum mechanics. This began when high-class Alkian scientists discovered that they no longer could build transistors any smaller as it would violate the laws of physics. Faced with a blockade and computational progress, these scientists turned to theories that were once considered foolish and searched for answers. In doing so, they found a certain low-class Alkian who theorized that light could act as both a particle and a wave, based on behavior he witnessed when shining a light through an open slit. Hmm, sounds familiar, I wonder who did that. At the time, the citizen had both went against his caste and scientific consensus, and for this, he was sundowned. But the, his theory of particles that can act outside the laws of physics as we knew them proved extremely useful. We probably shouldn't have killed him. That guy had some great ideas. Alkian computer scientists considered to be the true discoverers of quantum mechanics called these objects Cubits. What a cute name. And set about making transistors that can work with them. Their findings were nothing short of extraordinary. Cubits had the ability to hold multiple values at once and transfer information instantaneously across great distances. Since then, nearly every aspect of Alkian society is based off of these quantum computers, and the scientists that created them were deemed the highest class of all, except the one that we sundowned. He's dead. Okay. History of whole. It should be noted that Alkians are not the only intelligent species that inhabit this planet. There exists another, called the whole. By Alkian scientists, this species has been a terrifying puzzle since our first contact. While Alkians are carbon-based life forms, the whole seem to be made largely of silicon. Furthermore, they seem to lack any consistency of appearance. Seemingly, the only thing that whole citizens share in appearance is an ability to terrify oh, their little nightmares. This is exasperated by their diet. The whole are known to live solely off eating Alkians. Oh no! I'm an Alkian! Don't eat me! Because the whole are most active in darkness, however, certain measures have been made to protect our race. Large, well-built buildings have been erected. Outside travel, outside travel at night is banned without an authority's order. Still, as will be touched on as will be touched on later, the threat of the whole has never fully gone away. Warfare. <gasps> Time for some war. One of the most oft asked questions to historians of Alkia is this. Given how technology advanced Alkians are, why have they not annihilated the whole through warfare? Yeah, how come we didn't just genocide the whole? 
Seems like it would have been the best idea for our species. This question, largely asked by low-class citizens sent out on reclaiming or scouting missions, is easily answered with higher-class insight. While Alkians have made incredible advancements in areas of com computing, communication, and architecture, there has been little reason to evolve warfare cap capabilities. This is not to say that such things have not been tried. Driving the whole to extinction, after all, has been a goal of our race since we laid eyes on them. That's not very cool. I see where the name of the game is going to come in, I think. Maybe that's maybe it's a red herring. Maybe the name of the game is is, uh, is something else. We'll see. Seems like it's gonna be pretty cut f cut dry, but we'll see. Since the hole are only unbury themselves from deep underground at night, several nighttime attacks were conducted on hole hotspots using remote computer guided explosives. The hull, however, seemingly knowing their targets were in command silo were in, seemingly knowing their targets were in command silos miles away, didn't emerge to face the attacks. In turn, we shifted our focus to using fleets of zero zero class Alkians with shoulder mounted explosive launchers, all sent out at night. While this led to significant casualties on our end, it did the same for the hull. Further, several smaller hull were captured and made available for study. After several fleets of 001 class Alkians were killed, however, it became apparent that the amount of hull we blew up was not putting a dent in their population. If anything, with how many of our soldiers were becoming food, this made things worse. In turn, we have settled into a status quo of bunkering down in our well-lit towers and using surveyor cores to rid ourselves of any individual hull who, would have, who have buried themselves near our residences. For several hundred Alkia rotations, this has been the case. And with only scant isolated attacks on our buildings, this seemingly will continue until we find another habitable planet. This isn't to say that we have lost all hope. It is theorized that the Hull, too, have a civilization centered around a queen. Hull. Interesting. Defeating them in turn could be as simple as killing their queen. Nobody has seen such a queen and lived to tell the tale, however. We need to do some deep, deep inspection ops, hide under the ground, blend into their society, and kill their queen. Or maybe we'll mate with their queen. We will fuck their queen so that they can, we can quit having incest babies. Because this can't be good. Look at this guy. He's messed up. I thought that was just our dream form, but we just look like that. I think that that is the best ending to the game. Search for planets. Alkia's miserable co cohabitation with the Hull has been an embarrassment for high-class citizens throughout all of history. The fact that so many of the lower classes must get eaten in this way is nothing short of brutal, we feel, and... is nothing short of brutal, we feel, and a way to stop it must be found. In turn, our race has set our sights on space. After the quantum computing revolution, great leaps have been made in the realm of aerospace engineering and simulation. We can now say with confidence that we have the ability to deploy and colonize other planets at a distance of many light Alkia rotations away. Hmm. They really don't want to say years. However, such a planet has not to be found. This is because Alkians have a very specific set of conditions required to sustain life with water and tropical temperatures chief among them. No planet that consistently has both of these factors has been discovered by Alkian astronauts, but the search continues. It is theorized that planets of similar, similar geography would, have, would also have the capa capability to sustain life and thus produce signals. In turn, radio towers have been one of our race's most vital assets, as we comb the galaxy for anyone to listen to us, or give us something to listen to. I guess we... I guess we'll talk to this guy. I'm not allowed to touch anything except books. I'll talk to this guy. He looks mad at me. I didn't do anything. Don't be mad at me. Samo124. It took you damn long enough. 
spent your sweet ass time cleaning your ear follicles, huh? What? Don't wet me, you maggot! <gasps> mean! Good lord, your dreamnesia might be worse than I thought. Now it's got you struggling to retain your memories in the real world. Believe me, if I had a way to keep my workers awake at all time, it'll make things a lot damn easier around here. See, I'm not sure if you remember this, but I'm the general manager of Unit 17. This makes me the prime overseer of, among other things, Rations Bunker 17, Sleep Warehouse 17, and most importantly, Radio Tower 17, your location of employment. Well, we know that we why it is. We read all the books. What is my job? Psh, gotta explain everything. You work to support that tower. It's grunt work, essentially. Clean up, ma clean up, maintenance, and in this case, extraction. When it comes down to it, radio towers are the biggest hope for survival of our species. Say, do you even remember what the hole are? I'll take that as a no. God damn it. Time is of the essence now, but I gotta sit here explaining things to Sleepyhead over here. Shit. Well, you know, Alkia is home to not just one, but two intelligent species. There's us, the Alkians, but then there's another. They are called the Hole. Terrifying beasts, all of them. Though not quite as intelligent as us, they're twice as deadly. And they can only live in darkness, which means they... When night rolls around, they're on the prowl. These well-lit and well-fortified buildings, however, are a means to keep us safe during the night. But somehow they found a way into the generators below our tower, our radio tower, and destroyed them, taking over the tower in the process. Curse them. Been damn near 1,000 Alkian lo rotations since the last attack of this scale. We thought the barriers around the generators would stop anything to make things worse because it's been so long a lot of our military equipment has been decommissioned anyway not that it would make much of a difference at this point <laughs> so maggot I'm sure you see where I'm going with this that radio equipment is our ticket to contacting a planet capable of fostering life and getting the hell out of here so I'm gonna need you to get in there get our transmitters and receivers and bring them back here do you understand I don't want to. Man, you've got some nerve. I'll be honest, I don't care what you think in the slightest. Do you understand the meaning of your own name? Xmo124? That zero is there for a reason. Notice that it's less than the three in my name, XM3009. Do you know what that means? It means I am the Omega! Why is his backwards and mine is this way? He's so angry! Uh... Nope! I'm playing ignorant. It means that you do what I want! So get going. The clock is ticking. I gotta start waking up the next in line in case you don't come back. Heh. <laughs> that look on your face. You have no idea what's going on, do you? Almost feel bad about sending you to face the hole, but, you know, that's how the world works. If your dreamnesia is really that bad, you can brush up on our history in the hole using our records library behind me. Believe me, maggot, you'll need it. I just unlocked my side door. Once you collect yourself, get your butt out of here. Oh, and take this. I obtained an earpiece auto-translator. This is required for any Alkian who operates radio equipment. It uses machine learning to translate any communication it hears into our language. Only use it when you get to the receiver, just in case some miracle happens and we are contacted. But I don't want you to break it before then. You really need to, you should read up. Uh, once you're done, head through my side door. I don't want to see you again until you get our radio equipment back. Okay. Well, I'm a disgusting rat fish. What's this? There's a placard here. It says, this airlock leads outside. What does this one say? There's a placard here. It says, reminder, any exit outside of daytime hours requires 
approval from superior officer. I have approval. There's a placard here. It says, failure to comply with exit regulations will result in immediate sundowning. I don't think I like this sundowning thing they keep mentioning. Terminal, where is to life next to the control pad? It is now daytime. Free passage granted. Would you like to disengage the airlock? Yeah. Meow. Ah, uh, this is our tower that we live in. <gasps> There's a friend. <gasps> it is a friend. He's so happy. H Hi there. I'm Maxim1473. Gosh, I'm just so excited to be here. I love my job. Don't kill me. Oh, wait. You know what I'm doing out here, right? No. My, my, my. Hate to be frank, but were you born yesterday? I'm part of the survey course. The whole only move around at night, so while we sleep, they'll sometimes come out here and bury themselves in the sand, hoping to turn one of us into an unsuspecting snack. So my job is to get out here and find these oafs before they eat our workers. And when I get my hands on one of them, I'll kill it with my bare hands. That's just a joke. I killed him with an automatic explosive launcher. Duh. So watch your step, mister. Unless you want to do my job for me. <laughs> well, hate to say it, but I can't stay here talking to you forever. Have a good one and remember, leave the surveying to Alkia to, of Alkia to us. Uh, friend? Well, okay. <gasps> friend! Hi, friend. Hi, friend. That blue exoskeleton. You're a zero zero one class, right? Shit. Don't tell any of zero zero threes this, but I hate my job so fucking much. Going out here with a gun, hoping I'll accidentally step into an open hole mouth. Is this really all there is? At least I'm not as bad off as you are. And that blasted radio tower and all. Good luck out there, buddy. I haven't seen anyone return from there yet. Well, that boats confidence. Is this the radio tower? Hey, there's a big old hole here. Listen, I'm not scared of no radio tower. I'm Spiggle. Spiggle has no fear. And there's a little shiny thing up here, which means that it's awesome. Is there another? I'm pretty sure this is where I'm supposed to go. Either way. I'm pretty sure this is where I'm supposed to go, so I'm gonna go... Look over here. Alright. This path leads to the other enclaves. You have no business there. Well, that's okay because I love wasting my own time. Alright, Spiggle. Appears as though we are not allowed to look at anything. And there's a big ass hole here for no reason. Time to go into the radio. Okay. Dot, dot, dot. I already looked at this tower up and down, Spiggle. Trust me. You're unsure if you want to enter. But you have no choice. There's a fellow Spiggle over here. Look at this thing. You put your eyes inside the computer. You die. Given what lies ahead, you have a strong feeling you should save your progress. Uh, save. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave this off here. Uh, seems like a good stopping point. We have learned about the Spiegel spe species and the whole species and the history. We have the basis grounds of, uh, of world building here. And next we're gonna see what this radio tower is all about. And we're gonna learn why little guy in the corner is just sitting there being a dead Spiegel. And we will figure all that out in the next video.